Hey there! Hello! And once again, welcome to Biopandit, your one-stop comprehensive bioinformatics training platform. This is sort of your very own Mahapandit. Today, I'm going to talk about a fundamental aspect of structural biology, that is protein secondary structural elements. Biological proteins are polymers of amino acid units. The amino acids of a protein chain are covalently joined by polypeptide bonds. And for this reason, proteins are also known as polypeptides. The properties of the peptide bond account for several important properties of the polypeptide chains in water. For example, peptide bonds are very stable. The stability of peptide bond maintains the integrity of protein chains until their degradation. Another crucial property is the planar structure of peptide bonds. Because of quantum resonance, that is delocalization of electrons over several atoms, the peptide bond gains a partial double bond character. This restricts any rotation around the peptide bond. Only two angles of polymerized amino acids can rotate. The angle between C alpha atom and the amide nitrogen atom is 1. That is called phi. The angle between C alpha atom and the carbonyl carbon atom is another. That is called psi. Thus, you see guys, a protein is an unusual kind of polymer with rotable covalent bonds alternating with rigid planar ones. The combination greatly restricts the number of possible conformations that a polypeptide chain can adapt. Obviously, two atoms or atomic groups cannot occupy the same space simultaneously. So, the physical size of atomic groups limits the possible phi and psi torsion angles that the backbone of a polypeptide chain can adapt. These allowed values of phi and psi angles is represented as the Ramachandran plot. The Ramachandran plot tells us about the conformations that a polypeptide chain can adapt. But it does not tell us whether these adapted conformations will be stable. So, let us have a little chat about stable protein structures. What is stable? How do you know that something is stable? Simply speaking, a stable structure is something that remains unaltered within the time frame required to perform its function. Think about a bridge. Its function is to transport millions of vehicles over the years. A bridge lasts for decades. So, it is a stable structure from the perspective of its function. Now, what about proteins? If you think about a protein that takes part in an enzymatic reaction, then that reaction lasts for a few microseconds within the cell. So, the definition of stable for proteins is a bit different. Here, a stable structure means that remains unaltered for microseconds to milliseconds of time. You should always remember that starting from birth to death, a protein can undergo multiple folding and unfolding cycles. The functional native structure is basically the most stable conformation the polypeptide chain can adapt. How is this stability achieved? Well, five major Non-covalent interactions are responsible for maintaining the stability of a native structure. These interactions include disulfide bonds, salt bridges, hydrogen bonds, long-distance electrostatic interactions, and van der Waals interaction. Among these interactions, hydrogen bond interactions play a critical role to stabilize the globular structures of all known proteins. How are these hydrogen bonds formed? In the unfolded chain, Hydrogen bond donor and acceptor groups mainly form hydrogen bonds with water. Protein folding involves burial of hydrophobic groups in the interior of a compact structure so that the hydrogen bond donor and acceptor groups now form intra-protein hydrogen bonds. The entropy gain upon exclusion of water favors this process. Polar side chains on the surface of the protein keep interacting with water. Let us now come to the point. Although proteins are linear polymers, let us now come to the point. Although proteins are linear polymers, most soluble proteins are globular and they have a tightly packed core consisting 
preliminary of hydrophobic amino acids. Segments of the folded chain in nearly all proteins adapt conformations in which the phi and psi torsion angles repeat in a regular pattern. These regular segments are called the elements of secondary structure of the protein. Three general types of secondary structural elements have been identified. Helices, beta sheets and beta turns. We differentiate among these three elements based on two factors. One, the characteristic phi psi dihedral angles of the respective amino acids and two, the characteristic hydrogen bonding pattern. Let us start with helices. If a polypeptide chain is twisted by the same amount about each of its C alpha atoms, it assumes a helical conformation. The main chain hydrogen bonding pattern in helices are intra element in nature, meaning two neighboring helices never exhibit any main chain hydrogen bonding. Alpha helices can be right handed or clockwise, or they can be left handed and counterclockwise. But because all amino acids except glycine in proteins have the L configuration, steric constraints favor the right handed helix. In biological proteins, only a small turn or so of left handed alpha helix is all that we ever observe. Alpha helix structure repeats itself every 5.4 angstrom along the helix axis. This is why we say that alpha helix has a pitch of 5.4 angstrom. Alpha helices have 3.6 amino acid residues per turn. So a helix of 36 amino acid length has 10 turns. The separation of residues along the helix axis is 1.5 angstrom. So the alpha helix has a rise per residue of 1.5 angstrom. Every main chain carboxyl and amino group is hydrogen bonded to a peptide bond four residues away. This gives a very regular stable arrangement. Well, alpha helix is not the only type of helix observed in protein crystal structures. In fact, there are four major types of helices. These are right and left handed alpha helix, 310 helix and pi helix. You can see their molecular structures here. The helical few is superimposed on their backbones and side chains are shown as thin lines. Why these helices are different? Well, first of all, they all look different. Why do they look different? Obviously, their conformations are different. You can distinguish between these helices in terms of different conformational parameters, such as helical pitch, hydrogen bonding pattern, and characteristic phi and psi angles. I would not encourage you to memorize all of these, but if you just remember the hydrogen bonding pattern, the rest can just be deciphered. See, in alpha helices, irrespective of being left or right handed, every ith residue has a backbone hydrogen bond with the i plus fourth residue. For 310 helix, this is between i and i plus threeth residue. For pi helix, it is between i and i plus fifth residue. If you just remember this, the rest is easy. Hydrogen bonds have a specific distance criterion. So you can easily understand that if the same number of amino acids make up alpha, 310 and pi helix, the pi helix has to be the shortest, the 310 helix has to be the longest and alpha helix will be intermediate. Longest means highest helical pitch, shortest means smallest helical pitch. Now let us discuss about helix dipoles. In our video on basic chemical structure of amino acids, we demonstrated that individual amino acids exhibit specific dipole moments. Helix dipole moment is a cumulative effect of these individual microdipoles of constituent amino acid residues. Because helical peptides have periodic and well ordered structures, every backbone dipole vector points to approximately the same direction. You can see the scenario in the left hand side figure. This alignment of many microdipoles in the same direction creates a resultant large dipole moment directed from C terminus to N terminus. Why is this helix dipole so important? Because dipole dipole interactions between multiple helices can effectively destabilize the protein structure. However, the effect of this dipole can be neutralized by placing 
0.5 to 0.7 positive unit charge near the C terminus and 0.5 to 0.7 negative unit charge near the N terminus of the helix. This is why biological proteins having compact 3D structures have evolved to exhibit a positive discharge residue at the C terminus and a negative discharge residue at the N terminus of helices. There is another fascinating attribute I want to present that is amphiphilic nature of alpha helices. The alpha helix has 3.6 residues per turn. This periodicity means that residues 3 to 4 amino acids apart in the sequence will project from the same face of an alpha helix. This is of extreme importance in protein structures. How? In many alpha helices, polar and hydrophobic residues are distributed 3 to 4 residues apart in the sequence to produce a helix with one hydrophilic face and one hydrophobic phase. Such a helix is known as amphiphilic alpha helix. Helices with this character frequently occur on the surface of the protein where their polar faces are in contact with bulk water, while hydrophobic faces stabilize helix-helix packing with the protein core. Let us discuss about beta pleated sheets. Let me remind you that alpha helices involve intra-element main chain hydrogen bonding. In contrast, the beta pleated sheet involves inter-element hydrogen bonds between residues distant in the linear sequence. In beta sheets, two or more strands that may be widely separated in the protein sequence are arranged side by side with hydrogen bonds between the strands. If the beta strands run in the same direction, they are called parallel beta strands. If they run in opposite directions, they are called anti-parallel beta strands. Remember guys that both parallel and anti-parallel beta sheets are found in biological proteins. There are several examples of mixed beta sheets as well where both parallel and anti-parallel strands stay together. Generally, parallel beta sheets exhibit minus 119 degree phi and 113 degree psi angles whereas anti-parallel beta sheets exhibit minus 139 degree phi and about 135 degree psi angle. Beta sheets have a rippled or pleated edge on appearance. In this conformation, successive side chains of a polypeptide chain extend to opposite sides of the pleated sheet with a two residue repeat distance of 7 angstrom. Beta sheets are common structural motifs in proteins. The polypeptide chains in a beta sheet are known to be up to 15 residues long with the average being 6 residues. The distance between two strands is 3.5 angstrom for anti-parallel strands and 3.3 angstrom for parallel strands. Anti-parallel sheets are more stable because their inter-sheet main chain hydrogen bonds are more linear in nature. Like alpha helices, beta strands can be amphiphilic as well. Since in beta sheets, side chains of two successive amino acids point in the opposite directions, a stretch of alternating hydrophobic and hydrophilic residues can generate an amphiphilic beta strand. Just as alpha helices, such strands are observed at protein surface, with hydrophobic phase covering the protein core and hydrophilic phase facing the bulk water. The simplest secondary structural element in globular proteins is the beta term. It consists of a hydrogen bond between the carbonyl oxygen of the ith residue and the amide group of the I plus 3th residue, reversing the direction of the chain. This pattern of hydrogen bonding cannot continue throughout the chain because the turn is too tight. This tiny element of secondary structure is called a beta turn or a reverse turn or sometimes a hairpin turn based on, it, on its shape. In a few cases, this interaction can be made between residue I and I plus 2, but such a turn is highly strained and may be unstable. An interesting fact about beta turns is that most of the main chain carboxy and amino group hydrogen bond donor and acceptor sites are not making hydrogen bonds with other backbone atoms. Rather, such turns are generally found on protein surfaces 
where water molecules occupy these unsatisfied hydrogen bonding sites. There are two basic types of turns, type 1 and type 2. The hydrogen bonding pattern remains identical in both. The difference between the two types of turn is an inverted peptide bond. So you can easily understand that phi and shy angles associated with these two types of turn would be entirely different. That difference you can see here in this Ramachandran plot. And I guess this is all you need to know to build up your basic concepts. So this is all for now guys. For further information on proteins and nucleic acids, please keep watching the other videos of Biopandit. Please feel free to contact us in biopandit at the red gmail.com and in our Facebook page with suggestions, requests for videos and asking for technical help. If you like our videos, please hit the like button and help others by sharing it. For more updates, please subscribe to our channel and like our Facebook page. Bye guys. See you soon.